So for today, as you can see, I'm talking about implied domain and piecewise graphs. So let's talk about what implied means. If I were to come up to you and say, hey, Asher, we're having a party on Friday night. Doesn't that sort of imply that I'm inviting him to the party? It would be absolutely terrible of me to be like, well, what are you doing? You know, like, because... Because we're going to have a party. I mean, like, like, the implication was I was inviting him to the party. Well, when you have a math problem that has something like this in it, uh, and let's say an X on the bottom, and you don't state the domain, the domain for this is that X can't be zero. Did you know? This is the most fundamental one of them all. You can't have a zero on the bottom of a function, of anything. If you take anything and divide it by zero, you take n and divide it into zero parts, you, you can't do it. You're not allowed to have a zero down there. Do you get then n, no, wait, sorry, x in this case, x cannot be zero is part of its domain. Domain is all about x's, right? You learned that the other day, so x cannot be zero. That's its domain. But wait, there's something else it can't be. Because do you get, if you put a zero on the top, you'd end up having a square root of a negative, which also causes a problem? Do you get that you need numbers that are at least five? Think about that. If you put in a five, you're okay, right? Five divided by five. See, this is important to understand. It's not like a zero on the top is a problem. That is not a problem. Zero divided by 14 is just zero. It doesn't crash the function. It doesn't cause an error. If you took your calculator and divided 0 divided by 14, it would happily just say the answer is 0. So the top can be 0. It's an important thing when the top is 0, though. Let's talk about that. What if it's y equals this and the top became 0? Then y equals 0. You have just found the what what? The y-intercept is where x is 0. It's where x-intercept. Because see, y equals 0, it's not like it crashed. That's the difference. Turning into 0 is not a problem. That's not a crashed function. That's not a failed function. That's a function that just is 0, and it's okay to be 0. You can even graph 0, can't you? But if your function ever turns into y equals 14 over 0, then that can't exist. And so when you're graphing this function and you come to something like this, it can't exist. So at that moment, your function might have just gone, oh, I don't exist, empty spot, and then the function can continue on. That's called a hole. Or there could be one where it's an asymptote. So that's where you've got one like uh, 4 over x minus 3. Would you agree that I'd have a problem when x equaled 3, yes. because it makes the bottom 0, okay? So if it makes the bottom 0, then it's probably a hole or an asymptote. So if that makes the bottom 0, so x is 3 causes a problem, it causes an asymptote. And that looks like this. So then the rest of this function, I could get it by making a whole bunch of points. And what if those points went kind of like this? Would you be smart enough to connect the dots? I would be. That's not what it would look like. I'm just saying, if you found a bunch of points, they would never touch at 3, though. Why? Because as soon as you put in 3, the whole function crashes. But everywhere else, it can be fine. All right. Uh, so I'm uncomfortable leaving that up there because that's not what this function would look like. Um, but well, that's an excellent question. If you generally just describe functions that have a x on the bottom, the simplest one is 1 over x. 1 over x would look like this. And then I'm, this one's been shifted 3 to the right, so it would look something like that. It's like one of those kind. What they look like in the first place is like that. It's just got it moved over to the right a little bit. All right, so... Here's the important parts that I'm trying to teach you. X plus 3 on the top, X minus 7 on the bottom. A lot of kids say the two things that will cause it to crash are 7 and negative 3, and they're wrong. 
Which of those actually causes the function to crash? Seven. Seven. Because you can't have a seven on the bottom, and therefore, what about the 10 on the top? We don't care. Because 10 divided by zero, it turns into meaningless. So x equals seven would be an asymptote. We'll get into the holes later, but for right now, x equals seven is an asymptote. Then, the, how about the negative three? It's a thing, but it's not causing the function to crash. X equals negative three causes zero on the top, which means zero divided by anything is zero, so y equals zero, which is not the y-intercept, it's the x-intercept, x int. Okay, so what makes the top zero is your x-intercept. What makes the bottom zero is your asymptote, and that's because the function can't exist there. That's what a dotted line means on the graph, is that we can't put anything there. Yes? Yes, I will get to the whole part now because somebody wants to know. I'll just tell you. If it said like this, x plus 7 over x plus 7, and then I have an extra like x minus 4 here, let's say. Now, I just got done telling you that if it makes the bottom 0, that that would create an asymptote. But if it simultaneously makes the top 0... At the same time, well, which is it, Mr. Server? Because you said these would give you the x-intercepts and that these uh, would give you the asymptotes. And if what if it's both? Then that creates a hole. When you put in negative 7, you're going to get a hole in your function. So what that looks like is, again, if you had to graph this on a future unit, not right now, I'm going ahead, but... If you had to graph this, I know there's an asymptote, or there would have been an asymptote at negative 7 here, but it's not an asymptote because there's one on the top and the bottom. That means there's a hole there. So that means the function's happily going along, and all of a sudden, oop, doesn't work right there. And then it happily continues on. Now, what about all the rest of the points? You could make them. You could figure it out right now. You just have to find yourself an xy chart, and if you graph enough dots, you'll figure out where the function goes. And then it just, all of a sudden, it'll stop working at one spot. That's called a hole versus an asymptote. Write the second, you don't even have to know that. What you have to know is if I give you a function, everybody please write this one down. Square root of x plus 3 over, let's just keep it really simple, that one. Square root of x plus 3. What is the domain of that? Well, do I have to worry about the denominator turning into zero? No. no, because the denominator right now is a one. And will it ever change? No, the denominator is always a one, period. If it doesn't have an x down there, then the denominator is one. But what's the top? Could the top all of a sudden not work? Yes, yes if you put in, give me an example of a number that would not work. Negative, Negative four wouldn't work. Now, I noticed you guys didn't say negative 3. Negative 3 is important, though, because negative 3 is the spot where it just hits 0. And y will be 0, so that's called the what? X-intercept. X okay. So if I make the top 0, that's not crashing the function. If I make the top end up being the square root of a negative, like by putting in negative 4, then all of a sudden this thing won't exist anymore. Now, I want to back up and graph it. You remember how I started with y equals the square root of x plus 3? We know what that looks like. It's a square root graph that's been moved 3 to the left. It looks like that, and it starts like that. And when we're putting in numbers that are over here, you get why it doesn't exist, right? Because look, it doesn't exist over there. It starts here, and it goes that way. Why? Because you can put in a negative 3 and still be okay, but the second you put in anything smaller negative than that, like negative 4, the thing won't work. All right. So here are some... I just am trying to give you the big picture here for the first nine minutes. Now let's get to the, like, how do you do these problems? All right, everybody write this down. y equals square root of x plus 3. Let's do that one again, and let's, let's get the actual domain. You grab this part... You pull it out, and you say, I want that to be positive. 
right? Or zero. So I want x plus three greater than or equal to zero, and then you solve it. See how that worked? I knew what I wanted to happen, and so I made an equation for it. I wanted that stuff under the root to be bigger than or equal to zero. So then, if I subtract 3 from both sides, I have x is greater than or equal to negative 3, and that is called the domain. The domain is what you can safely feed this function. Did you know that if you fed a dog chocolate, there's a chance it'll die? Yes. It's true. You can't safely feed your dog chocolate. Do you get that you can uh, feed some humans peanuts and they're okay? Technically, they're not a nut. Did you know that they're a bean? Yes. They're a legume. Okay, and other people, you feed them a peanut and they're going to die, literally. And other people are in between where they're just going to feel a little bit sick. And then, so my point, functions are kind of like that. Some functions you can feed a three and they're fine. Other functions you feed it a three and it'll die. All right, so what you can safely feed the function is this. That's what you can safely feed the function. I can feed it anything as long as it's bigger than or equal to negative three. If I feed it something that's not that, it could die. Okay. All right, so there, humans are much more complicated than this, of course. Like, for instance, you can feed yourself water, and, and it's actually usually really a good thing. But did you know that you can actually kill yourself by drinking too much water? Yeah. You had too much water, it can kill you. you water, Same thing with salt. Yes. Did you know that a little bit of salt makes your steak taste great, but uh, too much salt can kill you? Like if you ate a big, I don't want to tell you the amount, some kid's going to probably turn it into a TikTok challenge. Uh, so if you eat too much salt, it'll kill you, like literally. And that seems crazy, like you can eat salt. Well, too much will kill you. So functions are either you can eat it or you can't. All right? So I'm going to give you another one. It's a little more complicated. Uh, y equals x plus 7 over x minus 11. I want to know the domain of this. Don't say it. Write it. Domain is what you can safely feed this function. That's what domain means. What you can safely feed the function. <coughs> can you feed it a negative 7? Yes, you can, but, and you found a very special spot then because it makes the whole thing zero. You might be like, what about the denominator? I don't care because it's zero over anything is zero. So you have found the x-intercept when you do that. But is that part of the domain? No. no, you don't care about that when you're asked a domain question. What you care about is what makes the bottom zero. So do you get 11 is an important thing. All right, so then how do you do this kind of problem, Mr. Server? You grab the bottom, you pull it out, x minus 11, and then you say, I want that to be not equal to 0. And then you solve it. I know some of you are going to be like, that's really clunky. Yeah, well, the way you did it a second ago is just all in your head. In a moment, it's going to be really hard to do it all in your head. So you write this as an equation that's not equal to 0, and then you can solve it and say x not equal to 11. So what can you safely feed the function? That's not the answer. That's what you can't feed the function. What can you feed the function? Anything from negative infinity until you hit 11. That was what you could safely feed the function. Oh, isn't there more things you could feed the function? Union 11 to infinity. That's what you can safely feed the function. You don't want to by accident answer with what you can't feed the function. You want to answer with what you can feed the function. Okay, so that's called implied domain. Here is an implied domain question that would be a little too easy for your test. <coughs> What's the implied domain of this function? Don't say it. Right. 
and then compare it with the kid next to you. Pause for a second. Let me give this a try. So, remember, domain's what you can safely feed the function. You should have said x minus 7 cannot equal 0, so x cannot equal 7. So then what you can safely feed the function is from negative infinity until 7, union <coughs> 7 to infinity. There's no dot there. That was just an oops. There we go. How about 0, though? A lot of kids are like, but, but, but 0... Zero makes the top zero. What is that then? Zero is the what? X-intercept. If you put in zero, you got Y equals zero, which makes it the X-intercept. The X-intercept is at zero. That's all that tells you. There's a dot at zero on the function. Not, it's not, it doesn't die there. A seven would cause it to die, and it causes an asymptote in this particular Seven's case. Like peanuts, they cause there you die. go. Sevens is a peanut. Like you you learned something important today. All right, so here's the combo platter, which is what we're supposed to end with, and I, I feel like it's too early, but we got a lot of slides we'll go through really quick in a minute. Um, this is implied domain, but with both. And... Wait, uh, there, with both, meaning you've got to deal with both the fact that you want the square root to not turn negative, and you got to deal with the fact that obviously you can't put 9 in the function. So both of those things are the domain. How do you do that? Remember me telling you, and this went really well on the test if you did it, you should make a number line for it. And a lot of you are like, but it said to do it in interval. Well, do it in number line first, and then make an interval out of it. So make an interval. So, sorry, first make a number line. Then you can write the answer as an interval. But for right now, just make it as a number line. In fact, on this test, it doesn't specify how you have to give the domain. So a number line is an okay way to give the answer. So it's not only the best way to see what's going on, it's also the best way to give the answer. All right, so I, and I'm sure you have figured out that I can't be nine, so I put an empty spot on the nine. And then technically I shade in both directions. Like I can do everything else except nine, but wait, there's more info. I'm gonna do that in a different color. You have an iPad right now, and on the test you can use multiple colors of pens if you want to. Uh, now this part, I strongly recommend you pull it out and you go x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. See, a lot of people get twisted on that like, like it can't be 0. No, the top can be 0. It's not going to break the function. It just finds the x-intercept. So I got to say greater than or equal to 0. So then x greater than or equal to 7. So here's a 7, and can it be 7? Yeah, fill it in. Greater than or equal to, and now this is important to think through. I'm going to make a line like this. Do I want the union or the intersect of those two things? I got the little blue graph around the 9, I got the black graph around the 7, do I want it to be a union or an intersect? So, so for example, this point out here, let's say it's uh, 6, it would be included in the whole less than 9, you know? Like, it'd be fine for that. If you're struggling with, like, oh, is 6 okay or not? Because it's in this blue one. You know, the blue one goes for forever over there. But it's not above 7. We'll just stick it in and see what happens. I put in a 6. Does my function like that or not? No, it doesn't like the 6. Because it's the square root of negative 1, and immediately that's imaginary. That doesn't exist. So no answer for like 6. So where what does it like? Would you agree it's the intersect? So between 7 and 9, can it be 9? If you're not sure, try it. Top's fine. Oh, bottom will crash, can't be 9. Okay, and then how about things bigger than 9, though? Yeah. yeah. 
Why? Like, let's try 10. So you put it in, see what happens. Can 10 work? 10 minus nine, bottom's fine. 10 minus seven, that's three, square root of three is fine. So numbers bigger than nine work too. So what's my final answer? From seven to nine, bracket, parenthesis, union, nine to infinity. That was my implied domain. I, did I have to write it with an, uh, that form? What, I can't remember what that's called. It's not number line. It's Isn't it supposed to be interval? interval. Did I have to do interval? No, I don't have to do interval. In fact, this would have been okay, but my graph was kind of messy there. So if I had left it that way, I would have been implying that you could have an answer here because like, I shaded it, you know. So I really needed to clean it up to get the final answer. Is All right. Yep, that's the whole point. So, your, oh wait, wait, I'm sorry. It's an intersection of the two things, but what that yields is an answer that is this, not, you don't wanna do intersect of these two, otherwise there'd be no solution. Do you get what I mean? So, the final, I can give you a really simple answer to this. On this, you're never gonna say two separate things intersected otherwise the answer will be no solution you know what i mean so whenever you have an answer that's got two parts put a u between them all right so let me show you a super fast one just write this down and watch how fast you can do these if you're good at them square root of x plus one uh x minus seven so i know the rules the rules are x cannot equal nope i just Wrote it wrong already. X minus 7 cannot equal 0. And that one, X plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. I solved those two little equations. I put them all on one number line. So I'm going to go minus 1 minus 1. X greater than or equal to negative 1. Here's negative 1. Greater than or equal to means I fill it in and I shade that way. Let's put your pass on the front desk there. If there's no pass, that's okay. But I... I'll take care of attendance later. So this right here, getting solved, adding seven, adding seven, x not equal to seven. Here's a seven, empty spot, shades in both directions. So now I know it's gonna go like this and it's gonna go like that. And if you were like conflicted about down here because it's part of the x is less than seven, well then put in a number like negative three and see what happens. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, that causes the square root of a negative. That doesn't work down there. So there, my final answer would have been negative one to seven, bracket, parenthesis, union, seven to infinity. You feel like you can do that? Okay, that's the new thing for today. All right, I'll give you a couple more like that to practice later in the hour, but now I have to teach you one more thing because this is on a pre -cuck and we go kind of fast. If this had been regular pre -cuck, you'd have been done for the day just telling you that that's kind of the difference with honors and regular. So uh, we're going to forge ahead into something called piecewise functions. That's where the function, everybody write this down, is three things. It's just f of x equals 2x when x is less than 0. I'll make them three different colors. It's the absolute value of x when x is greater than or equal to 0. And I'm going to stop there because we don't need to have a triple right off the bat. That's still, I was leaving room for a third one, but hard enough to do just this when you've never done one before. So what they're saying here is that... This graph is f of x equals 2x sometimes. And it's f of x equals absolute value of x sometimes. And the dividing line is at 0, which is like right down there. So I'm making a dotted line down here for my dividing line. And then where it's less than 0, it's 2x. Now, if I just graphed y equals 2x, would you agree that that is the line where y equals 2x? It goes through 0. It's got a, kind of a steep slope. Does that make sense? But remember, it's only that when it's less than 0. So i got to erase out this part.
okay? And then it's the absolute value of x, and you all know the absolute value of x should look like this. Uh, oh, I better use a different color. Like a V-shape, right? But it's only that when it's bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, and for centuries, the trouble has always been at the border between countries. Countries don't have a, usually have a problem unless it's on the border between them. Right now, there's two nuclear countries that both claim an area. Uh, it's Kashmir, okay, and that Kashmir region is right between two countries, and they both think it's theirs, and they both have nukes, and they both could have a nuclear war over that area. Now, I don't think they're dumb enough to do that, but if you both think it's yours, it's going to be a problem, right? So right at the border, that's where you got to be really careful, and I've, I've done a lot of these grade, grading of these tests, and kids will screw it up because they'll do to what I just did. It is not clear who owns that border. So you have to be really clear. Who owns that? The top function or the bottom function? I mean that by like here. Like, like, like this. Is this, is, does that guy own it? All right. Or does this one own it? The bottom one. The green. Yeah, there's a lot of different colors going around here. So, the green one that I just highlighted in green, that one owns it. So, which one is that? That's the absolute value one. That's the blue one as we graphed it. So the blue one owns it, so I got to put a dot right there that's really pronounced so that I can tell who owns that. Now, if that was all done in pencil, which it could be because on your next test you might choose to use a pencil, you'd have to go like this so that I could tell you meant that that goes right up to that spot but doesn't own it. So that's like a dot inside an empty circle. So, can you tell who owns this spot? I can. I can tell blue owns the zero, zero spot. All right. All right. I want to give you one more. Ready? And then we'll, I can say at this moment that you'll have learned everything, if you can do this. And they just get more complicated, but you'll still have the basics down. F of X is, I'm going to give you just two again things. And this time it's not going to be at zero. We're going to say that f of x is 2x plus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 4. And f of x is negative x when x is, and what do you think I'm going to say? Less, less, than, less than 4. Now everybody graph that. Your job could be three different things. We could say, here's some equations, graph it. Option B, we could give you a graph, and you would have to write the equations. Option C, we could give you a function like this and then say, tell me what it is when x equals 2. And you got to be like, well, should I put it in here or here? If I tell you x equals 2, is x bigger than or equal to 4? No. So if x equaled 2, you'd only have one choice. x equaled 2, you'd have to be in this function. So that's the three ways. You can graph it. You can talk about points. Or you can have the equations. All right, so here's the divider line. Remember me telling you the trouble is always at the border? So the border between what? The two functions. So I have x is less than 4, so there's the 4 line. x is less than 4, the function is negative x. In my opinion, you should just graph negative x and go, okay, y equals negative x. I forgot what that even looks like. Oh, it's like y equals x, which would be this way. That, oh, sorry. This is y equals x, but it's not that. It goes this way. And why did I stop there? Because it can't go past that line. That's, that's like the divide between two countries. Okay. And now I'll, I'll worry about the border at the end and who owns the border <coughs> spot. But Okay. 
And then the other equation is 2x plus 3. In my opinion, you should just graph 2x plus 3. Here, I just did this one in green, so I'm going to circle it in green. Uh, now I'm going to circle this one in blue. And I'm going to graph it in blue. And I'm not going to worry about, like, who owns what at the beginning. I'm just going to graph y equals 2x plus 3. Here's 3. And if it's 2x, it's like that. And then I go, oh, but wait, that's on both sides of the border. So I'm going to extend this up a little bit. And then I'm going to erase out the part that it can't be. There is my function. It's that little blue part and the green part. And who owns the border? The blue one on the border or the red one? Blue, blue owns the border because it says or equal to four. So the blue one gets to own this spot, big solid dot. The green one does not own the spot, empty circle. And you gotta make sure it's clear that it's empty because otherwise, Got two dots, and they both claim the border, and then you got trouble with a capital T. That is everything I needed to teach you for today. Now, you should practice it. Now, we have, in class, about 15 minutes left. So, yay, I'm going to give you some problems that you can do to practice. Today, I do not have time to describe the Mad Mouse Lab, but basically, it's functions that get moved around, which is piecewise functions. That's what we just talked about. And so there'll be a lab. That's our next thing here in honors pre -cuck. You wouldn't have that in regular pre -cuck, but in honors, you have these labs. Uh, I know you already turned the other one a while ago, so we'll deal with that later. Uh, for right now, uh, this Mad Mouse Lab is just being introduced, and I'll tell you much more about it on a different day. And let's just take a quick picture. Here is... Uh, us making a function that adds 4 and multiplies by 3. I got a function, and I want you to take x, and I want you to add 4, and then I want you to times by 3 in that order. To force the add 4 to be first, I'm putting it in parentheses, and I'm timesing by 3. Now that you got the equation for it, Can't you put 5 in the function and pretty easy? It's just the, the hard part here is only making the function, which I don't feel like is that hard. And g of x is, I called it f of x, but they just decided to call it g of x. You can call it whatever you want, but that is the function. Sticking 5 in it is this. Okay. Packed all this stuff in, uh, but I need to get to the homework part, so let's... Uh, we got to watch out for denominators. We talked about that. Remember, we would set the denominator not equal to zero. So you'd have to say x plus 3 not equal to zero. And radicals, square root of x minus 5. And then we'd set that. Hey, this part needs to be greater than or equal to zero. I talked about how it killed the function. So some teachers talk about that as like a poison for the function. Um, one more thing, it does say even radicals, which is a good reminder. This is one of those like fine points. It's only square roots or fourth roots that we have to worry about, or sixth roots, or eighth roots, as long as it's an even root. Why? Because the third root of a negative works just fine. Don't worry, on the day one, we're not going to burn you on, oh, by the way, that one wasn't a problem because... It has a 3 here. We're not going to do that. We're just going to use even roots, like square roots. Okay. If I gave you that function, you should be able to go, oh, x can't equal 0. That's part of the domain. And what about the top? Don't mess with the top. All it'll find for you is the what? x-intercept. This is like f of x. That's like y. And y equals, and if the top is 0, you found the x-intercept. No, the y intercept. No. Ugh. The x intercept where y is 0. There we go. If the top turns into 0. So don't worry about the top when you're in a problem about domain. This one's just x not equal to 0. But that means negative infinity works up until 0. Union with 0 until infinity. All right. This 
is like what you should be able to do a week from now when we take the test. And that would be, don't, right now you're distracting two people. Thank you. So this right here is part of it. Do you get how x cannot equal 3? But do you also get that the whole circle here can't be 1? Because if I have 1 minus that whole blue circle, if that whole blue circle was 1, then this function would crash. So 4x over x minus 3 can't be 1. Otherwise, this whole denominator turns into a 0. Okay, so that got super intense. A little too much for one day in my opinion, but this is how fast we have to go. It just kind of blows my mind that we're going to have to go 22% faster than this next year because this class will be an AP class, but it's already going plenty fast. All right, so this one, if you had to find it, so a, a domain, you just go 4 minus 3x needs to be greater than... Come on. Zero, but not just greater than zero, or equal to zero. There it is. That part there needed to stay greater than or equal to zero, and I think any of you since three years ago could have solved that. Take away four from both sides. But there is a thing I want you to switch the sign because you're dividing by negative three. Less than or equal to four thirds. All right, so... Uh, I encourage you to try problems that have answers. Why? The ones that are up there, they don't have answers. Starting right there, all the problems have answers because we have an answer key posted. So uh, all I can ask is that for the rest of your time that you work on math and then you don't have any homework tonight, okay? But we'll obviously know that we need to, like, help you do this more before you get tested on it. So there'll be more chances to practice this stuff. All right, so there's what the homework would have been. And the, the good part is the answer key is there. There is no Dropbox because you don't have to do this. But I just ask that you work on doing these questions from here to the end of the document. And if you get stuck, you can always come up and ask, but please do consult the key first. And that's all I have for you for today.